Welcome back to Call of Duty Modern Warfare, and today I'd like to do an updated settings video. I did one of these back when the game was first released. Some of my settings have changed, but I also know that there's a lot of players coming to the game playing uh, Battle Royale, playing Warzone. These settings are what these are, are the settings I use in both multiplayer and in Battle Royale, so these are some really good settings in my personal opinion. This, like I said, this is what I use, so let's go ahead and hop right into it. When it comes to button layout, I use Tactical Flipped. Of course, I play on PS4. I prefer to shoot with R1 and L1. This will move the melee to circle. This will use your uh, move your lethal and tacticals to R2 and L2. Crouch and prone to R3. If you're on Xbox, you may not want to go with a flipped uh, button setting on the top. You may still want to shoot with L2 and R2. So you might just want to go with a, you know, like a tactical setting. That way you can move your melee and your crouch prone slide from circle to R3. Now, there's some other good good settings in my opinion here. Stick and move is really good. If you don't have like the PlayStation back button or like a scuff or an Astro controller bumper, jumper flipped or is also really good setting to look into. So it's all just personal preference and kind of what setting or what kind of controller you use. When it comes to stick layout, that is default. Inverted look is disabled. Horizontal and vertical, of course, this is going to be how fast you look left and right and up and down. This does not have anything to do with your ADS. There's a separate setting for that. So you can put this to what you would like. I would recommend starting out at 4.4 and bumping it up. I run 5.4 and have ran 5.4 for a long time. Every once in a while, after I've played a lot, I'm playing day in and day out for hours, I, I might go up to 6.5, but personally, 5.4 is where I'm comfortable. Now, when it comes to low zoom and high zoom, of course, this is going to be iron sights, red dots, that kind of thing for low zoom. High zoom is going to be anything that is a 3.25 magnified scope or higher. I always set these both to the same thing. The default is 1.0. I would recommend anything between 0.70 and 0.90. Once again, when I get to playing a lot and play day in and day out, I usually go up to a .80. Some people like a little bit higher. Some people, like I said, like I said, like .90 or .95. But I think you're going to find your sweet spot once you get your sensitivity of horizontal and vertical right where you like it. I think between .70 and .90 are the best. 1.0 feels a little too quick to me, but some people like that. So just go ahead and try try it out, swap it up, see what you're comfortable with. When it comes to aim response curve, I started out with standard, played with standard for several weeks, but then I went to dynamic because it felt like once I got my aim down, my sensitivity down, the dynamic was just better. Um, this may be a placebo effect. It may be all in my head. A lot of people like linear. I don't see a difference between linear and standard personally. It seems like once your aim is down, dynamic is kind of what works for me. So you may want to try the different ones out. You may just like to stay on standard. Whatever is comfortable for you is absolutely perfect. Um, anything... Uh, kind of going with the controller vibration. I don't I don't like the vibration, so I always disable this. When it comes to aim, aim assist, there's a lot of different options. I feel that precision and focusing are not as good as standard. Standard feels the best to me. Standard's what I'm used to in most Call of Duty games. Precision and focusing, I really can't tell a big difference in is uh, a big difference in, excuse me, but the only thing I can really see with these is it seems like my aim is not as good with uh, precision or focusing on of course you do have the option to disable it but if you're on console i really would not recommend that when it comes to weapon mount activation ads plus melee is what i'm comfortable with some people prefer the double tap ads but ads plus melee is really uh what i'm used to and what i've played with since the game has been released and when you want to move off that mount i always enable that of course you don't want that disabled but how you can move off that mount is can it kind of be uh, you know kind of tweaked i guess you know if you want to you know release it from ads to unmount or if you want to hold the movement input to be able to move uh, to be able to dismount so that's going to be the options you have between the disable and enable like i said i just leave that enabled aim down sight is hold of course equipment behavior is hold use to reload is tap to reload now i played the game from the start so i played a lot of multiplayer tap to reload is where i was comfortable if you're new to the game and you're just playing battle royale you haven't you don't you haven't purchased the entire game so you're just playing the br you're just playing warzone contextual tap might be the best because you can tap to reload or to use but it prioritizes the use when possible holding the button always reloads so you may want to try that like i said i've played the game since release so tap to reload is what i'm just comfortable with and what's kind of just ingrained in my brain to just automatically do so like i said if you're new you're just playing warzone you might want to try a contextual tap uh depleted ammo weapon switch i have that on that way if you run out of ammo it will automatically switch your weapon slide behavior i have to hold tap is not bad but i'm used to hold from past call of duty titles auto move forward and auto sprint are both disabled this has not been in the game that long 
and they were kind of buggy about a month or so back, so I just left them both disabled. You might want to try them out, but I really prefer just to be able to do my own movement and not have to, you know, double tap to be able to sprint or be able to just move forward. So I, I just personally like them both disabled. And vehicle camera recenter is enabled. Now, when it comes to your input device, of course, here's where you're going to see controller or mouse and keyboard, whatever you're using on whatever platform you're playing on. Brightness, I use 52% or like at, at 52.00. I use a BenQ monitor. I have a FPS setting on this monitor. It's already bright with that setting. If you're having issues with seeing things, I would recommend if bumping it up to maybe 60 or 65 if you're playing on a darker monitor or a darker, you know, looking TV. Uh, but that's just personal preference. Like I said, my monitor has a bright brightness setting with the FPS settings that are very high anyway. Film grain, you always want this turned off completely. So down to zero. Tool tips, personal preference, I have mine enabled. Subtitles, some people like to leave these on because they don't want to have game sound turned up so loud, so they will uh, enable these, but I just have mine disabled. Of course, language select is your personal preference, whatever language you speak. When it comes to colorblind settings, even though I'm not colorblind, this Pro Tan Tanopia uh, is really nice to me. Maybe I am just a little bit colorblind. I've never been tested for it or anything, but you might want to mess around with some of these colorblind settings because I feel like they are pretty nice. Um, you can just leave them disabled, but the Pro Tan Tanopia I really like. Uh, of course, colorblind target, you can leave to world, interface, or both. Of course, if you have these on, I would recommend setting them both. World motion blur and weapon motion blur, turn these both off. They're great cinematic effects if you're playing campaign, but if you're playing multiplayer, you're playing Warzone, you want both of those disabled. Now, when it comes to the HUD, I prefer my minimap as square. This is just something that has been recently added. You get more of a view on your minimap anyway at square than you do circular, and you also want the minimap rotation enabled. When it comes to contact filters uh text chat of course you can enable or disable you can disable or enable the profanity uh filter and everything else you know gore dismemberment that's all personal preference uh anything else on that list really nothing too you know too uh game changing with anything else you know kind of down here at the bottom when it comes to audio uh, the audio mix i use is boost low a lot of people use boost high i would recommend between boost boost high and boost low on console now if you're playing on maybe a, a PC or something you might want to use and have a studio headset. You might want to use the studio preference and, and make your own headset settings. I did this for a while with um, my Astro A40 TRs that I had kind of use my own settings, but I have really figured out even with my own settings, the boost low is the best for me. I can hear footsteps the best with boost low. Some people say boost high is better. I feel that boost high is a little too loud. When it comes to master volume, mine is 100%. Music volume is zero. Dialogue is 30 and effects is 100. Some people turn this way down. That way they can crank up their headset and a lot of the stuff that's going on is not that loud. Warzone is not as bad to me as multiplayer. Multiplayer is extremely loud with gunfire and kill streaks. So you may not want to turn this down too much in Warzone, but just kind of whatever it sound, whatever sounds the best, you kind of set it there. Um, when it comes to Juggernaut music, of course, this is strictly for multiplayer. I do have that disabled. Uh, when it comes to hit marker sound effects, I use classic instead of modern warfare, just whatever personal preference for you. And of course, these are all the voice chat options if you use in-game voice chat. And of course, anything else within this, of course, is like uh, cross-play. You can enable or disable in the account settings. Cross-play uh, cross communications, you can enable or disable. And of course, all your other information is listed here as well. Anyway, guys, I kind of hope this helped you out if you are new to the game or if you're looking for some updated settings for the game. And of course, if you like the video, hit the like. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. If you are a subscriber, make sure you click the bell icon up in the top right corner so you know when all my videos go live. If you have a chance, share the video. It does help out the channel a lot. And be sure to check out GT Racing. They are the affiliate on the channel. They sell gaming chairs and office chairs. All their information is linked down in the description. And I'll catch you next time. Peace.